Today we admit that the carpenter's hands are nailed to a cross. Today we see the King of Kings is crowned with thorns and must wear pur the purple robe of mockery. Today we know that God sets us free as Jesus is imprisoned on a tree. We know it, what we know, this we know is God's Friday. So we have come to offer ourselves in worship. And join with me, please. Oh God, we, we confess, confess to you the fears which paralyze us and the insecurities that keep us from knowing each other. They leave us isolated and helpless. Often we are engulfed by difficulties and panic so that we forsake our call to serve you. In the name of Christ crucified, who knew the weakness and brokenness of humanity, we ask you to heal us from our fear and anxiety. Free us to serve you and trust in your presence. May our faith endure even when we see no reason for faith. Help us to continue to hope, even when we see no reason for hope. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. And our assurance of pardon. God invites our questions, our wondering, and even our doubts. God invites us into new relationship of openness. God invites us to be made whole, to accept the gifts of forgiveness, and to journey toward new answers and a new beginning. We are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Jesus, having prayed this prayer, left with his disciples and crossed over the brook of Kidron at a place where there was a garden. He and his disciples entered it. Judas, his betrayer, knew the place because Jesus and his disciples went there often. So Judas led the way to the garden and the Roman soldiers and police sent by the high priests and the Pharisees followed. They arrived there with lanterns and torches and swords. Jesus, knowing by now everything was imploding on him, went out and met them. He said, Who are you after? They answered, Jesus, the Nazarene. He said, That's me. The soldiers recoiled, totally taken aback. Judas, his betrayer, stood out like a sore thumb. Jesus asked again, who are you after? And they answered, Jesus, the Nazarene. I told you, said Jesus, that's me. I am the one. So if it is me you are after, then let these others go. And this validated the words in his prayer. I did not lose one, those you gave me. Just then Simon Peter, who was carrying the sword, pulled it from his sheath and struck the chief priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. Malachus was the servant's name. Jesus ordered Peter, put back your sword. Do you think for a minute that 
I'm not going to drink this cup the Father gave me? Then the Roman soldiers under their commander, joined by the Jewish police, seized Jesus and tied him up. They took him first to Aeneas, the father-in-law of Caiaphas. Caiaphas was the chief priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it was to their advantage that one man die for the people. On the first Sunday of Advent, the Sunday in which we, are, we recalled the hope that we have in Christ, we remembered that the prophets of Israel spo all spoke of the coming of Christ, of how a Savior would be born, a king in the line of David. On Christmas Day, the Christ of our hope, hope was born. On Good Friday, the Christ of our hope died. On Easter Day, the Christ of our hope rose from the dead and then descended into heaven. And on the last day, the Christ of our hope will come again to establish his kingdom over all things on earth. And as followers of Christ, we awaited his return. And we let, lit the candle to remember that he came to us humbly in a manger at Bethlehem and gave light to the world. We lit this candle to remind us to be alert and to watch for his return. Lord Jesus, you gave your life for us. You suffered and died that we might be made whole. Loving God, we have often thanked you for the hope you give us. Yet we still have those bleak moments when hope seems to be lost. Even in this moment, help us prepare our hearts for the Lord's coming. Bless our worship. Help us live holy and righteous lives. We ask it in the name of the one born in Bethlehem. Amen. Amen.
Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. That other disciple was known to the chief priests. So we went in with Jesus to the chief priest's courtyard. Peter had to stay outside. Then the other disciple went out, spoke to the doorkeeper, and got Peter in. The young woman who was the doorkeeper said to Peter, Aren't you one of this man's disciples? He said, No, no, I'm not. The servant and the police made a fire because of the cold and were huddled. They're warming themselves. And Peter stood with them, trying to get warm. Aeneas interrogated Jesus regarding his disciples and his teachings. And Jesus answered, I have spoken openly in public. I have taught regularly in meeting places and the temple where the Jews have all come together. Everything has been out in the open. I have said nothing in secret. So why are you treating me like a traitor? Question those who have been listening to me. They know well what I have said. My teachings have all been above board. And when he said this, one of the policemen standing there slapped Jesus across the face, saying, how dare you speak to the chief priest like that? And Jesus replied, if I have said something wrong, prove it. But if I have spoken the plain truth, why this slapping around? Then Aeneas sent him, still tied up to the chief priest Caiaphas. And meanwhile, Simon Peter was back at the fire, still trying to get warm. The others said to him, aren't you the one of those disciples? He denied it, not me. And one of the chief priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, said, didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. Just then a rooster crowed. On the second day of Advent, we lit the candle of peace. It is sometimes called the Bethlehem candle to remind us of the peace or the place in which preparations were made to receive and cradle the Christ child. The prophet Isaiah calls Christ the Prince of Peace. Through John the Baptist and all the other prophets, God asks us to prepare our hearts so that he may come in. Often we are troubled and cannot and can find no place in our life, and that small light disappears from our day. Lord Jesus, you gave your life for us. You suffered and died that we might be made whole. Loving God, thank you for the peace you offer. As we face moments that disturb our inner peace, As we deal with hostility in our world, help us still to prepare our hearts to receive your presence. Guide us in all that we say and do. We ask in the name of the one born in Bethlehem. Amen.
So, so Pilate took Jesus and had him whipped. The soldiers, having braided a crown from thorns, set, his on, set it on his head, threw a purple robe over him, and approached him with, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they greeted him with slaps in the face. Pilate went back out again and said to them, I present him to you, but I want you to know that I do not find him guilty of any crime. Just then Jesus came out wearing the thorn crown and the purple robe. Pilate announced, Here he is, the man. When the high priest and the police saw him, they shouted in a frenzy, Crucify! Crucify! And Pilate told them, You take him. You crucify him. I find nothing wrong with him. The Jews answered, We have a law. And by that law he must die because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he became even more scared. He went back into the palace and said to Jesus, Where did you come from? And Jesus gave no answer. And Pilate said, Don't you, you won't talk? Don't you know that I have the authority to pardon you and the authority to crucify you? And Jesus said, you haven't a shred of authority over me except what has been given to you from heaven. That's why the one who betrayed me to you has committed a far greater fault. At this, Pilate tried his best to par pardon him. But the Jews shouted him down, If you pardon this man, you're no friend of Caesar's. Anyone setting himself up as king defies Caesar. And when Pilate heard those words, he led Jesus outside. He sat down at the judgment seat in the area designated Stone Court. It was the preparation day for Passover. The hour was noon, and Pilate said to the Jews, Here is your king. And they shouted back, Kill him, kill him, crucify him. And Pilate said, I am to crucify your king? The high priest answered, We have no king except Caesar. Pilate caved into their demand. He turned them over to be crucified. On the third day of Advent, we lit the candle of joy. It reminded of the joy that Mary felt when the angel Gabriel told her that a special child would be born to her, a child who would save and deliver his people. God wants us to have joy. The angel who announced to the shepherds that Jesus had been born told them, Do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Messiah the Lord. We lit a candle to remember that Christ brings the promise of a new life, a life in which the blind receive sight, the lame walk, and the prisoners set free. We lit it to remember that Jesus showed us the way to true and everlasting joy. Yet we must extinguish this light of joy as we acknowledge that we have understood the promise and often chose to live joyless lives in which we mumble and grumble and complain and do not lift our voices in moments of praise. Lord Jesus, you gave your life for us. 
You suffered and died that we might be made whole. Loving God, we accept that while we have offered you thanks for the joy you have, <clears throat> that you have to offer, we have been reluctant to live with this gift. Help us prepare our hearts for this gift. Help us to live joy-filled lives. We ask it in the name of the one born in Bethlehem. Amen. They took Jesus away, carrying his cross. Jesus went out to the place called Skull Hill, or in Hebrew, Gogolatha, where they crucified him, and with two others, one on each side, Jesus in the middle. Pilate wrote a sign and had it placed on the cross. It read, Jesus, the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read the sign because the place where Jesus was crucified was right next to the city. It was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. The Jewish high priest objected, Don't write, they said to Pilate. The king of the Jews, make it this man said, I am the king of the Jews. And Pilate responded by saying, I've written what I've written. When they crucified him, the Roman soldiers took his clothes and divided them up four ways, to each soldier a fourth. But his robe was a seamless, a single was seamless, a single piece of weaving. So they said to each other, Let's not tear it up. Let's throw dice to see who gets it. This confirmed this, what the scripture said. They divided up my clothes among them and threw dice for my coat. The soldiers validated scripture. And when the soldiers were looking after themselves, Jesus' mother, his aunt, Mary, wife of Cloapas, Mary Magdalene, stood at the foot of the cross. And Jesus saw his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her. He said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then to the disciple, here is your mother. From that moment, the disciple accepted her as his own mother.
On the fourth day of Advent, we lit the candle of love. This candle light or this light was meant to remind us of the love that God has for us. Jesus showed us God's perfect love. We acknowledge him as God's love in human form. The scripture says that God so loved the world that he gave God's only son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We often remind ourselves that love is patient. Love is kind and envies no one. Love is never boastful or conceited, rude or selfish. Love is not quick to take offense. It keeps no records of wrongs. It does not gloat over other people's troubles, but rejoices in the right, the good, and the true. There is nothing that love cannot face. There is no limit to its faith, to its hope, to its endurance. Love never ends. Yet we do our best to kill love. We extinguish, extinguish this candle to remember that God's perfect love is offered to all as shown in Jesus. Yet we have failed to accept it. Lord Jesus, you gave your life for us. You suffered and died that we might be made whole. Loving God, we have in the past offered you thanks for your gifts of love. Yet we have refused to accept or to share your love. Help us in this moment to prepare our hearts to receive you and to love loving and to live loving lives. We ask it in the name of the one born in Bethlehem. Amen.
At noon, the sky became extremely dark. The darkness lasted three hours. At three o'clock, Jesus groaned out of the depths, crying loudly, Eloi, Eloi, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders who said, heard him said, listen, he's calling out for Elijah. Someone ran and soaked a sponge of sour wine and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, let's see if Elijah comes down to take him down. But Jesus, with a loud cry, gave his last breath. At that moment, the temple curtain ripped down from the middle. When the Roman captain, standing guard in front of him, saw that he had quick breathing, he said, this has to be the Son of God. We lit, we lit this candle, Lord, to remind us of hope, peace, joy, and the love you gave us in the birth of our Savior. We look forward to the celebrating, to celebrating his coming, coming among us as a babe at Bethlehem, and claim that we would watch for his coming again so that your love and guiding presence would be with us. In joyful expectation, we have prayed to you, our Savior and our Redeemer. We have claimed that you open the eyes of our hearts so that we were no longer bound by our blindness. We spoke openly that we could now live with hope. Because of God revealed in Jesus, we said that life itself is filled with new meaning and dignity. And we said that we are in your debt, Lord. You are faithful when we are not. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. Lord Jesus, you gave your life for us. You suffered and died that we might be faithful. Lord God, as we extinguish this light, remind us again of your hope, peace, joy, and love. Help us to face the bleak side of our humanity and not be driven to fear and despair. Help us to witness to the light of the word, world born at Bethlehem and lived as a person of faith and life. Grant that we may be candles and mirrors of your light to a dark and waiting world. Where am I? I confess I am not always at the cross. It is easy to be distracted and let my attention move here and there. We confess we're not always grateful for the death of Jesus. A person gets busy with all sorts of things. Good things, mind you, like family and church and committees and responsibilities to aging parents and community projects, doing homework, shopping, part-time work, life gets hectic and burdensome. We confess we try to carry our own burdens and work out my own salvation. We like to be in control. I wonder, do I betray Jesus with my self-sufficiency? Do we deny him? with our self-centered living, all we have cheap, gone astray, we have all turned to our own way. 
we have been ungrateful. Our hearts have not been humble. Our spirits are not contrite. Teach us how to find your presence, God, at the cross. Teach us how to share the death of Jesus, that he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. Lord God, you have given us everything. Help us in like manner to give of ourselves. Bless us in all that we think, feel, say, and do, that we, like Jesus, may be a blessing to others. We ask this and all things that we ask of through him, saying the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
my siblings in Christ, since we stand surrounded by all those who have gone before us, an enormous cloud of witnesses, let us drop every extra weight, every sin that clings to us and slackens our pace. And let us run with endurance the long race set before us. Stay focused on Jesus, who designed and perfected our faith. He endured on the cross and ignored the shame of that death because he focused on the joy that was set before him. And now he is seated beside God on the throne, a place of honor. In the same way, let us also focus on the race ahead. Go into the days of this week strong, strong in the presence of the Holy Spirit and confident that God goes with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Let your